So I'd like to say a few words about the Motion and Music 3D project using Cinema 4D. The first thing is making sure that you have a properly edited and formatted sound file. So most of the sound files imagine that you're going to want to work with are already in MP3 form. And that's fine for listening to music, but not great for editing programs because it's a compressed audio format. And so I'm going to edit my sound file here in Adobe Audition since this is on all of the machines in the digital arts, uh, digital media arts lab. If you belong to the Adobe Creative Cloud, this is also uh, available for download. The song should be between 15 and 25 seconds, or rather the excerpt from the song. And so in this case, I've opened up my MP3 in uh, Audition, and we can hear it playing. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab just the first 30 seconds, so I'm highlighting the rest of it. I'm just going to hit delete. And that's pretty good. So right about there, let's get rid of the rest of it and grab the last section and I'm going to come up to favorites and fade out. You see that fades out at the end of the sound file pretty cleanly. And now I've got a correctly formatted sound file depending on how if your part of the song that you want to animate to is at the beginning of the song you probably won't need to fade it in. However if it's in the middle of a song you might need to fade in and fade out, in which case you could come up the favorites and just select fade in for the beginning. But mine starts off with a clean bit of silence and then the intro. So that's not a big deal. Uh, I've got it uh, edited, sounds fine, and it fades out, which we want all of our sound files to do. We don't want any sort of just clips at the end that ends up sounding very unprofessional. So, how do I get this into a format that Cinema 4D will understand? I'm going to come up here to File, Save As, and Format is going to need to be WAV. WAV is an uncompressed audio format that will work a bit better. I'm going to call this Default Edit. The name of the song is Default, that's why I came up with that name. And the other thing you'll need to adjust here slightly is the sample rate and bit depth. Without getting into this too much, this needs to be 44.1 hertz, so that we can keep that the same. And the bit depth should be 16. So this is CD quality audio, the type of audio that's used on comp compact discs. And I'm saving it, let's put it on the desktop for now. Great. And so now I can get rid of Audition. Now bringing the sound into Cinema 4D to edit, uh, I'm going to open up Cinema 4D. Now just like when we uh, edited to the music in After Effects, it's going to be extremely advantageous to be able to see the waveform and place my keyframes key in alignment with the waveform. So bringing sound in here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make a null Remember, null is just an empty placeholder and axis in space. And this is going to represent the sound. So I'm just going to make a null and rename this sound. And you can bring the sound in best in the animation layout. In the animation layout here, uh, I need to add this sound file to this null. And in order to do that, this null needs to appear in the timeline. The reason it's not appearing in the timeline right now is that there are no keyframes. So I just need to create a keyframe on this null. Uh, it really doesn't matter what gets keyframed as long as you just keyframe something. I get, this null is not going to be moving or we're not going to put anything else inside this null and so I'm just going to go ahead and hold down command and click X and you see when I did that this appears over here in this in the timeline now under sound. Great. 
Now, bringing in the actual sound file, with this null selected in the Create menu, there is Add Special Tracks. And as you might have guessed, the special type of track we want is a sound track. And if you click the sound track, up in the Attributes menu now, you can link to a specific sound file. Remember, every time we see three dots in Cinema 4D, this is a uh, file browser dialog box. And I'm going to bring in the file I just made, not the PKF file. That is an Adobe Audition session file. We want the actual WAV file. So be, be sure you get the one that says .wav. I'm going to open that. And now you see it there. If we come back down, it's appeared. I think I grabbed the wrong file. I don't want silence. I want, there we go, default. That's the name of the song. Great. OK, default edit. And down here, every time we see this arrow in any of the Mac applications, that's a can be unfolded. I'm going to unfold it. And now, in the keyframe view in the timeline, remember, there's two views in the timeline, either keyframe view or f-curve view. In keyframe view, I can see the waveform. And now I can create keyframes that line up with the waveform. When I play this back, now it's here and we can see the waveform in order to line it up. That's going to be the best way to time the animation. What you're hearing may be a little bit off from this at times, depending on how complex the animation is in the on the screen. Um, don't let that throw you off. Uh, Cinema 4D will try to repeat small chunks in order to let the visuals catch up to the animation. This will all be solid when it's rendered out. So don't worry about uh, that sort of, if you're hearing any sort of looped tiny bits of audio, go ahead and line up your keyframes with the waveform where it's appropriate. And then uh, when you go to render out, it'll be correctly formatted. The let me go back to the standard view. One other thing to keep in mind here, uh, this project is going to ask you to use the uh, spline wrap deformer. Just a quick word about that. This works for sort of moving things along a path, usually the longer objects. For instance, there's a cylinder. I'm always going to look at corrode shading with lines so I can see the lines. Remember, a single polygon cannot be bent, so I'm going to add some more polygons here along the side uh, with the cylinder in the height segments. And I'm going to change it so it's facing in the Z direction. Now, if I wanted to use this to wrap along a spline, I'm in the top view. We always want to make splines in an orthographic view. I'm going to get, make a freehand spline that's just kind of a curvy path for this thing to follow. That's fine. Now that I've got that set up, I've got my cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and round the ends of this with the fillet. That looks a little bit better. And I think I might make it even a little bit taller. Or that's the height segments, the actual height. There we go. That's not bad. Now, remember the deformers work on their parent or their peer. So I can go ahead and grab the spline wrap deformer and make it a child so the cylinder is the parent of the spline wrap. I need to tell the spline wrap which spline to wrap to and in the spline wrap deformer there's a spline area. I can either drag the spline down or I can click over here and while my cursor is the question mark I can click on the spline and that fills it in. Now you may see some initial horrific distortion for your object. Uh, that's because by default, spline wrap is set to fit spline, meaning it's going to take whatever object you had and wrap it, stretch it, so it wraps along the entire length of the spline. Most of the time, that's not exactly what we want to be working with. I'm going to change it to keep length. And we can see that uh, gets it closer to what we want. But the orientation is still off on the actual cylinder. 
and I come here and change the orientation. Uh, pos there we go, positive x gets this much better. Now in the spline wrap, our offset allows us to move this object along the spline. And just like the uh, align to spline tag, this allows us to animate something along a path. Except now we're actually deforming along said path. So if I bring this back, let's go ahead and animate this thing. I'm going to go ahead and command click. I'm going to move the keyframe back to the beginning actually. Uh, so let's say this happens after that intro. And give myself a few more frames. When, after he says that and the music kicks in there we go some more frames much better let's say right about there it's gonna start so I'm gonna command click offset and have this happen fairly quickly within a few frames let's have it go the whole way along that path and I command click again and so over this section There we go. And so we have that, that cylinder moving along the spline wrap. One of the other objects to become familiar with here is the cloner. And if I were to grab the cloner out of the MoGraph menu, it essentially allows us to repeat objects in space. For instance, if I put a cube into the cloner, we see that it makes three copies of the cube. They're all on top of each other right now. We can make the copies in different shapes. Here they are all in a circle. And we can turn up the amount of copies. Uh, this is all well and good, but uh, I'd actually like to copy the uh, animation I just made here. In order to do that, this whole thing is sort of one system, the cylinder, the spline wrap, and the spline itself. I'm going to go ahead and package those up in a null. and then make that null a child of the cloner. So now, we'll see that I have multiple objects moving. It's essentially cloned all of those splines, spline wraps, and cylinders in a radial pattern uh, that's allowed for this to repeat over time. Again, I'm in radial. Now we hear it slowing down there and that's what I was talking about. We're asking it to do more and more work. Uh, we're exponentially multiplying the amount of polygons that need to be drawn on the screen here. But as long as it lines up with the waveform, we're going to be okay. And so I'll post this example file that I have right here uh, along with this tutorial on the assignment uh, and give everybody a little bit more time to uh, to fine-tune this one. Alright, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.